Hello, everybody, and good afternoon. Live from Marion, Massachusetts, this is the finals of the Joshua Weeks New Year's Invitational between the Kent Hill and St. Paul schools. Both teams undefeated at the tournament so far. Kent Hill needed a shootout to defeat the host Tabor 3-2 in their first game of the tournament and advanced to the champ and advanced to the championship game with another 3-2 victory over St. George's. St. Paul's won four to nothing over Winchardon, and then just last night four to three over Proctor, which was a threatening hockey game. The Big Red Boys have now made it to the championship games of both their Hollywood Day tournaments this season. The last go-around was a 2-0 loss to the Gunnery at the Avon Old Farms Christmas Classic. They now look to transform that experience into a victory today. So glad to have you along. My name is Ryan Murphy here for St. Paul Sports. Kent Hill has broken the huddle down to our left. They'll be wearing white and skating from left to right when we get going. You see St. Paul's breaking huddle now down to our right. They'll be coming from right to left and are wearing red. Interestingly, these teams have worn the same color throughout the tournament. So St. Paul's has always been in red. It's been their winning color in the tournament. And it's the same goal for Kent Hill. They are in white. The starting goaltender for tonight, Max Maccioni. He's got a 278 goals against average, a 907 same percentage in 10 of the 12 games Kent Hill has played. He's starting for the Huskies. Andy Barron is in goal down to our right for St. Paul's. He made 34 stops against Proctor in the 4-3 win last night. Looks like we are ready to go. The face-off at center. We'll see Owen Stadheim taking on Braden LaRochelle. And we're just waiting on, I think they're having some issue with the ice, maybe. Oh, they needed a peg for the St. Paul's goal. Yeah, you need those. <laughs> and the referee is making sure that goal is set in place for this game. Behind Andy Barron, he gets the signal, or gives the signal. Now the linesman looks like he's ready. And here we go, folks. This is for the championship and all the marbles on New Year's. Face-off won there by Owens. Had a big hit right off the bat. Teddy Magdalene stood up Mike Maccioni as St. Paul's works in. That was Simpson's drive. And his brother, Max Maccioni, was forced to make his first save. The two brothers right off the bat, one getting hit and one having to make a save, Max and Mike. Both of them from North Kingston, Rhode Island, won a goaltender and won a forward. Maccioni, though, setting the tone there. That was a bone-crunching hit at center ice. Maccioni with his head down, and now through center with some space. It's Menes with a wrister, and he missed the goal high. Neutral territory wide open for that line, and St. Paul's came up three abreast. There's Dumas trying to cut around. Good poke out there by Maccioni. Comes back for his defense partner, Russell. There's Simpson on the blue line, flying in is Flinton. The pass goes off a high Kent Hill stick. It's Flinton now working on the wall. Russell was calling for it in the middle of the ice. Ty Green trying to drag it towards the middle. It was blocked there by Drew Gardner, the captain for Kent Hill. There's Russell. He gets away from him on the left point, and he's forced to regroup back out at center. He's got an open man in Jumas off to his right, but he drifts one up the middle. And here's Ty Green taken down by Evan Giovanni, but the puck gets into the zone anyway. Jack Ladd got hit. Giovanni, Di Giovanni taken down by Flinton as this puck is sent the other way by the Huskies. Early icing call, 13-35 into this one. St. Paul's will make a change and put out the Schubert, Bussey, and Orn line for their first shift of this one. Kent Hill obviously unallowed to make a change on the icing call as NCAA rules, which is what all Nepsak games go by. That pass from Sullivan was too far ahead of Guillaume Deere, who now pitches in to chip it to the corner. The battle between Schubert and Adit Desai down low. And Schubert won it. He's going to come far side and go away from him after he got his stick chomped. Guillaume Deere pitching in. Schubert covering his spot at the line. It's now James Orton with a shot. Well, not the stick of Bussy in the slot to the corner. That's Sullivan back in low. He takes a check. Here's Schubert. Trying to center it, went off a stick and over to the other side again. Taking a look around over there was Funakoshi. He might have looked for too long as St. Paul's has got the puck again. That moment's hesitation there by Funakoshi. The reason why he wasn't first on it. 
Once again, risky the other way. Tired Kent's Hill body is on the ice right now, and icing called once again. This is the same unit that's been out there for the past minute or so. Or not minute or so, more than a minute now. Two shifts as St. Paul's rolls over a different trio over the boards. And it's the same group for the Huskies. Some early pressure from the Big Red testing the endurance of Kent Hill. Puck comes to the middle. Chance here to clear the zone. Simpson kept it in, though. How about this? Menez backhanded it right on the stick of Drew Gardner up the boards. And now they're going to clear the zone. A good little smack there by Di Giovanni. Kent Hill's got to get a, make a change here. Here comes Menez right into the zone. Just lost control of the puck. Spins it back in front now. It'll come to the line. That's where Sweet plays it. Back in low for Menez again. Simpson is in the slot. The pass goes for McElhaney here on the other side. Simpson got a stick on it. It was just a bit too high for him. I don't think it was intended for him, though. Sadheim tried to thread the needle. Drew Gardner blocked that. It comes up the wall again. And a chance for another clear by Funakoshi. And he missed it. Holy cow. And even when Kent Hill, they got the puck out of the zone there, but... Still couldn't get a change. They're going to get two new bodies on now. Gardner remains on the ice on left defense. Here's Menez waiting. His shot blocked by Gardner. Got the rebound back and put it high and wide. It'll come up the boards and here's Harshai. He'll just get the clear. A junior from Davie, Florida. Justin Harshaw, a junior. I think I said that. <laughs> Turnover along the wall. Here's Green with a gift. But he sent it right onto the stick of Owen Aaron. Yannick Boulay will get this puck deep for Kent Hill. They're scrambling for a change right now. Nobody up ice for check against St. Paul's. And that gives Dumas some room to, room to skate it. He will across the red line and shut it in. And Maccioni will be forced to play it. Right around the near side. And here's Munzig. Out to center. Went off the stick of a breaking in La Rochelle. Barrett out of his to play it. It's high and off the glass, but knocked down over there by Maccioni. It's Dumas. Smooth play, and it's now Ty Green for John Sacklin. Out at center is Flinton as well. Banked for Cunningham, and then on the right side for La Rochelle. That's where they make their zone entry, Kent Hill, but not for long as Ty Green cleared it for the Big Red. The side, left side, it's chopped up and out of play by Mike Maggioni. So Kent Hill surviving the consecutive icing calls early in this one, 10.44 on the clock, but... St. Paul's pressuring. The Big Red are coming off of playing a Proctor team, which was very aggressive on the forecheck. It was a two-man forecheck. And a, uh, Proctor did open penalty up coming here as Orn got his stick in the legs of a Kent Hill player at mid ice. Seems to be more unhappy with himself than the call, and he's going to step out of the box. So yes, after Kent Hill survived, they're now going to get rewarded for it and go up a man here for 90 seconds. The championship game, just like all the other games here at Tabor. 15 minutes and 90 second penalties. St. Paul's will be forced to kill one of those right now. And Kent Hill is on the puck as well. That's Cunningham on the left point. He'll shoot it back in deep. It's right onto the stick of Maggioni, or sorry, Futakoshi. Sorry, neither of them. <laughs> that was La Rochelle. Now it's Maggioni. Puck comes back to the line here, and it's Gardner. Right side for Maggioni. Trickled away from him. Macklin, he gets to the puck. He lays a hit. Still loose in that right corner, and coming up with it is La Rochelle. To the line, and Gardner, his shot snared by Barrett. That's his first stop of the game, and he goes out to his left to make it. And he was looking... Gardner was looking for someone to cut into the net there and maybe get a piece of it and redirect it towards the goal as it was going wide if Barron hadn't reached out the glove to make the save. The safe play and one made by the St. Paul's goalie. Big red change penalty killing units. Sacklad out there with Green up top and then Dumas and Russell all on the back end and Sacklad finds it. He gets it right by Cunningham and his outstretched stick and down she goes. Look at Green right up there putting some pressure on Gardner who makes a play over for his defense partner Cunningham. Left side and it's kicked off the skate of Maccioni. He's gonna come in now. Look at this, a chance and a save is made by Barron. Oh, hit hard is Russell down on the left side and he's not happy about it. 
Gives a cross check to Mike Maggioni. Who I don't think was a player. He was the player that took him into the wall and he took him in hard. Maggioni, a post grad, his brother, the goaltender, and a junior, as we mentioned. Mentioned probably superfluously. <laughs> That'll do it for the Orn. Well, not for the Orn penalty. Still 23 seconds left to go in that. But for the St. Paul's penalty kill, we'll now have some four on four play for those 23 seconds and then an abbreviated St. Paul's power play. Four on four action, so we don't reiterate the word play. Got to keep the language diverse, right? Here's Russell, who drew the penalty for Dubas. Back for Bryson Russell, top of the slot. Bryson has scored two goals in the last two games for St. Paul's, right from that area at the top of the slot. St. Paul's now on the power play, and Menez hops over the billboards. He gets the puck here to Menez, drifting into the deep with a backhander and sealing the post is Max Maccioni. Whistle blows, and uh, interestingly, <laughs> That whistle from the referee seemed a bit dead, maybe. I don't know. It made an odd, odd sound. That wasn't dead. <laughs> maybe it just didn't blow it enough. These are the kind of things I like to observe out here. <laughs> Game's not important, but I'll tell you what is. <laughs> the sound of the whistle. <laughs> Top power play unit out there for St. Paul's right now. And it's Stadheim handling the puck for Julian Menez in the far corner. Working up to the faceoff circle. And now it's Halliday. High slot. McElhinney. Slap pass for Simpson. Right in front for Stadheim. And he just couldn't corral the pass. Try to get the one-timer. But he missed it. And now Halliday is forced to go back for the puck. He sends one crisply across. And striding with it now in behind his own goal is McElhinney. He'll come out. Beating it up right side. The pass from Simpson. Cutting over here for Menez. He'll charge in. Menez on the left side. Good zone entry. He's going to go around the net. Julian Menez with some space holding on. Waiting with a shot. Rebound. Sam on the back door. Sneaking in is McElhinney. But he can't beat the defender there. It'll come up to the point where it's chipped out of play into the Kent bench. Kent Hill bench. Now I got to clarify that. And I apologize if I don't. There is a Kent school too. In Kent, Connecticut. The Lions, and this is not them. <laughs> this is Kent's Hill out of Kent's Hill, Maine. Big difference there. Clean draw win from Green. Here is Russell, and Sackcloud was standing in front. He got hit by the goaltender there. Maybe trying to sell a call, Sackcloud was. The big man went down hard. Out of the box is Maccioni. He's standing on the blue line, but the pass might have gone off his stick or that of Russell, the St. Paul's defender. Nonetheless, Kent Hill is in the offensive zone. It's centered. Oh, my goodness. What a stop by Barron. That is Braden LaRochelle, the senior out of Medicine Hat. In the middle of the ice, he got all of that tip. I'm not sure if it was Dumas or Russell who was guarding him. I think it was Dumas, though. And he couldn't tie up the stick of La Rochelle. And a beautiful tip. It was going in behind Barron as he was moving. The goaltender for St. Paul's Barron. From left to right. And he had to reach back. And he got it with the glove. That's a terrific stop. Puck came out there on Cam Knowles. So Kent still have to, or is forced to regroup here. Flint on the wall in a bit of trouble right below us. I don't know if you can see that right now. I'm always hesitant to tip the camera straight downwards because I don't want it to fall off and onto the ice, especially at the steep angle we're up at right now, literally right above ice level. Levine laid a hit. He's now in a puck battle on the far wall. It'll come up to the line and keeping it there as Desai sends it to the goal. Kent Hill coming alive here. Another shot for them. And an Andy Barron save. A tough start there with the two icings and then having to kill off that penalty. We're back to five aside. And Kent's Hill looking better and better. Owen Aaron digs into the draw for the Huskies. And he won it too, but his winger, that was Yannick Boulet, was all tied up by Bussy on the far side. Schubert had a stab at it, comes towards the middle, getting down there is Harshaw, he got hit. Still loose between the hashes, Drew will find it and play it up and ahead for Schubert. Here comes Joe Schubert, he's by himself right now, so he just lets the shot go. It goes up, over the boards, over the glass, and over the netting, and all the way out of play. 
a bit off the stick there, the Kent's Hill defender. Faceoff will be down to the right. It went off the Kent's Hill defender's stick, and my, my uh, reason for mentioning that <laughs> would be that's why we have the faceoff in the offensive zone for St. Paul's, and Oren is right behind Schubert for it. They try to set up that play once in a while. He wins it straight back for Orn, who takes a shot. It's all dependent on the draw win by Joe Schubert, and he did not win it. So back for it is Malcolm Bussey. For Alex Levine on the right side, off the board, stepping up there is La Rochelle to get it deep. 6.26 to go and still scoreless. Fanning on the puck is Drew. Right up there in the play now is Munzig. He forced that turnover. He's going to the slot right now. Coming in, trying to play the puck is Maccioni, but the other way is James Orn for the big red. Orn gets it in around Liam Walsh, and he's playing the puck first. Taken to the boards by Desai. Flutes on the goal line. McElhinney now. Joe Schubert, that puck slowly making its way to him. He tried to center for Bussy, but it's knocked out of the slot area by La Rochelle. I shouldn't say the bottom of the circle, so he was going towards the slot, but never made it there. Center step move by Cunningham was a no-go, and here's Harrison Sweet. For Malcolm Bussy on the right side, watching him is Gardner as Bussy moves in with a shot. Rebounds him for Green, and he missed the goal wide. What a glorious opportunity for Ty Green between the hash marks. He was falling. I don't know if he got tripped. There's no penalty on the play. Culver laying a big hit down to our left. He took Munzig in front of the Kent's Hill bench. Green the opportunity, but still no score. Here's the pass up the left side. It's Charlie Culver to the middle for Halliday. Dropping it back off for Culver. Nice little give and go there by those two. And the save was made by Maccioni. And back out to center she comes. McElhinney, right side. Getting there first is Halliday. He'll sweep it in and take the check. Out of his net to stop it is Maccioni. He's back in goal now. Two on one down low for St. Paul's, but Kent Hill gets it up. Halliday trying to keep it in down to our left. He did not do that, or could not do that, I should say. Puck comes out. St. Paul's calling for offside. 4.55 on the clock down to our right. The face off, St. Paul's gets the puck deep. It's worked up by Kent Hill and out now. Owen oh, Aaron doing some good work and he's belted to the ice in front of the scoring table. That just made the uh, the broadcast booth here shake a bit. We are perched right above the glass, as I mentioned, I think. And you can probably tell by watching the video. <laughs> this could be a three on two from the blue line. Stadheim couldn't make the move. Now it could be a two on one. Stadheim with Menace going to the goal. The pass to Vermitter. Simpson now scores! Not exactly textbook from the big red forwards, but they get the goal. And it's Eric Simpson potting it behind. Max Maggioni, who was down and out, he couldn't track the play. After the puck went wobbling everywhere, it was going to be a three on two, and then a nice poke check by the Kent's Hill defender, and then it was going to be a two on one. The pass from Stadheim to Menez got knocked down, and following up on the play is Eric Simpson. He was the high guy, and he came in and just wristed one. Just above the pad of Max Maccioni, we get our first score of the game. It is one to nothing, and St. Paul's has the lead. They go with 347 here in this first period. Russell will drop it off, and Flinton put it deep. Russell's now in the corner with that puck. He'll come out to the line where Flinton is covering his spot. Ty Green on it. Green for Sacklad, the assistant captain for St. Paul's. Good work there by La Rochelle, and he'll get it out. Munzig being told by his bench down to our left to get the puck deep. He does just that and goes in for it, laying a bit of a hit on Russell as those two collide. Flint will play it up and off the glass, and Ty Green will give chase. Between the blue lines, curling with it is D. Giovanni. He ran into some trouble. 
They battle away for it, and St. Paul's not able to get it in. Kent Hill will do just that, though, in behind Russell, who is behind his own goal now, coming up this near side. He played it up for Flint, who couldn't handle it. They battle in front of the St. Paul's bench. The puck came out, though, and being yelled at by the Elizabeth is Miles Kirby to get out of the zone. He's back in now and onside. Here's a lead pass for Fershette. This could be a two-on-one with Stoddard going to the goal. That's Fershette in front for Stoddard, and he could not get a stick on the pass. That knocked off its warnings by Max Maggioni. <laughs> the two freshmen for St. Paul's, and I don't think I am exposing company secrets when I say they're not exactly on the ice all the time. Not regular shifters for Shet and Stoddard, but a great opportunity there for the two of them to get their first points collectively in the big red uniform. For Shet was coming down the right side, and he didn't really realize, I think, that he was wide out and Stoddard, well, he realized he was in on a two-on-one, but Stoddard was just playing too wide to make that pass really work. Stoddard takes his man down as he chips it into the zone and goes working for it. Menez is out there centering the two. And the shot coming through. Ooh, that went off the heel of Julian Menez. The shot from Teddy Magdalene at the left point. Maccioni on top of things. And he's got it in his glove. Productive shift by Stoddard for Shet and Menes there. There it is, a set play in the wrister by Orn off the face off, went off a leg. Wide of the goal and then back out to center. Alex Levine had a tap, still loose on the blue line. Levine taking a bump over there from Mike Maccioni. Well, I say Maccioni and it's not the goaltender. I think you'll know. I don't think I have to clarify with the first names. And again, it should be done nonetheless, just to, for more precision, shall we say. <laughs> Here's Schubert, the stretch pass for Bussy missed him. It'll go wide of the goal, but getting there first is Orn, and having to play the way at the last moment is the goaltender, Maccioni. Here's Orn now, and the blue line working in is Schubert. He gets the high saucer pass and knocked it down. Three guys in low for St. Paul's, and it's Orn up top. That's Levine for Drew. His shot was blocked there by Harshaw, who stepped up and was in some pain, so he just had to clear the zone. Drew on it. He'll lead Bussy up the right side, forced to re-corral, and now sends Stadheim in on the left. Stadheim with Menez behind him. Stadheim, good poke there in low by Edit Desai. Menez trying to kick it off the wall. It's bouncing around in the faceoff circle. Menez lost it in the feet of Simpson, who's now battling. But coming up with it instead is Ryan Munzig. They both just can't unravel the strings. They're under a minute to play here in this first period of the championship game at the Joshua Weeks New Year's Invitational. Rister coming from the point blocked by Dumas. It is St. Paul's 1, Kent Hill 0. So far, and the goal belongs to Eric Simpson. Wheeling it up and ahead with a bit of momentum is Menez, but a swift poke check by Cunningham does away with all that. St. Paul's would have been offside, so Ken Hill some room to play it. Oh, what a hit by Dumas. And they are gonna call him, it looks like a charging call to me. Dumas wasn't that far away. At least in my eyes. Maybe a rough against Dumas. He's going to step out of the box, though, nonetheless. Penalty number eight for St. Paul's and a great opportunity for Kent Hill. With 27.6 seconds to go, they're going to be up a man. There's a saying in hockey that goals within the last minute and a half are the ones that kill you the most. Heading into the dressing room. Oh, look out, coach. I think that might have hit Coach Bonpolisi on the St. Paul's bench as it shot out a play by Ken Hill. Uh, I think it hit him in the arm. He's smiling about it. If not, it was certainly a close call. Pucks flying into the St. Paul's bench has been a dangerous thing all season, actually. Yeah. Mike Stoddard got drilled with a puck in the helmet earlier. Look at Sacklight up there. He's going to force an offensive zone draw for St. Paul's. Good work. He hustled in there and beat everyone by a mile, including those in the white jerseys. 
Yes, in that game against Proctor, not the recent one. St. Paul's and Proctor have played twice. The one earlier in December up in Andover. Stoddard, we were right above the bench. The bench was down to our left and was basically on the bench. There's a shot off the draw and they score! It's goal scoring machine, John Sacklad! He pokes it in off the draw. I don't quote players much, but John Sacklett on the morning, yesterday morning on January 1st, he said, it's new year, new me. I'm a goal scoring machine at breakfast. And it has proven to be true. That's his third goal in as many games. And it is a dagger. As we talked about within the final 20 seconds of play, a shorty from Sacklett. And it's two to nothing as we had to break. Back and since in the goals. St. Paul's two, Kent Hill zero. Second period is coming up next from the finals of the Joshua H. Weeks New Year's Invitational.